Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Educate360. Welcome to today's webinar, Building Pivot Tables in Microsoft Excel, presented by our fantastic instructor for today, Ryan Randall. We are in Zoom for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with you in an email after the webinar. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the chat or the Q&A option for our short Q&A after the presentation. Educate360 is so excited to present this webinar today. So without further ado, I will now hand it over to you, Ryan. Thank you so much, Mariella. Welcome. Good afternoon. And thank you so much for joining me for our Building Excel Pivot Tables webinar. Um, my name is Ryan Randall. I am an applications instructor with New Horizons. I'm actually out of Michigan. And let's get started here and just do a very quick overview before we jump into our Excel and begin building our pivot tables. So why do we use pivot tables in general? You probably hear that word thrown around, hear that tool thrown around. And really, it could be very easily um, answered of why we use pivot tables. And really, that word is summarizing. Right. What we really do with pivot tables above anything else is we could have these large data sets and we can create these very easy to read, very under, easy to understand tables and charts to go along with them. We can add um, interactive elements that will help us filter that data. But what it does is allows us to organize large data sets to see or to get answers from our data. So we summarize our data. We can look at our data in different ways, why we call it a pivot table. And we'll see this with different examples. I might look at, we're gonna look at call center. I might look at, you know, total call length by, uh, you know, by agent or, you know, all of uh, the other calculations that we'll see here, all of our other options. And then finally, we can also add in uh, pivot charts as well to give, you know, that kind of interactive dashboard feel to our reports as well. Now, when we have our pivot table, we summarize generally with, you know, functions. I could look at total uh, call time. I could look at average call time. I can also, as we said, put in filters to give us dynamic data filtering. That's what gives us our interactive in our interactive dashboards. And it allows us then to compare and segment data. All right. So as we summarize, we want to use pivot tables to take our very large data sets and summarize them quickly to give um you know, our readers or ourselves a clear, concise look at our data. And as we grow with that, we're able to build out these dashboard, dynamic dashboard reports that are very interactive. All right, so again, with our pivot tables and effective data visualization, we could use both tables, we could use charts, and we can combine them again in our overall dashboard reports. So I would rather, instead of spending this time inside of a slide, I would rather get back into Excel. So these are three things we wanna hit on, working with calculated fields, using conditional formatting and linking tables using Power Pivot. And Power Pivot is an add-on and we'll talk about that here in a second. So I am going to bring in my data set. And as I had mentioned, I have this kind of call center data. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And in this data, I could see dates calls were made. I could see the agent that took the call. I have wait time, call length. I could see the line they called on, what issue, what resolution we gave them. I could either even see things like customer satisfaction and things like the original sales amount. 
So, of course, you know, if I wanted to get answers like what is my uh, customer satisfaction, average customer satisfaction by agent, right? To get that answer from here, you know, I really can't do much unless I'm using like filters and what we call a total row in a table. But it's not a way that I present my data. You know, we have hundreds, thousands of rows here. So summarizing and give people a very quick look as what I said before of maybe seeing uh, customer satisfaction by agents. I'm not able to do this in this large data set. So I want to bring this data into a pivot table. Now, we could bring in data that's both a regular range, right? A regular range just means I haven't turned it into anything like a table. It's just a basic range of cells. One issue with that, there's a couple issues with that. The biggest issue is this. When you use a regular range and let's say new rows or columns are added to your data, then anytime that data is added, unless we go back to this data and reselect the area of the data or the rows and columns we want to bring into the pivot table, we could be missing data. Whereas when my data is in a table, which I could always take any data and turn it into a table by going to insert table. And I know that this is in a table because I get what's called a contextual tab. A contextual tab, like we see here with table design, is a tab that will only show up here um, if we're clicked on an object. So we would see like chart tools, we would see pivot table, analyze. So we'll be seeing that throughout. Now, the one thing I'd want to make sure here under table design is the table name, especially because we're going to be using power pivot, meaning we're going to be using multiple tables together. And if those tables don't have names, it's going to be very difficult to kind of figure out and link those tables together to create one cohesive data model. So let's go ahead right here and let's get started. Let's bring this over to a pivot table. So I'm going to go up to my insert tab. Now, much like recommended charts, I have recommended pivot tables where they would create a pivot table for me based on options. But I want to build my own. So I'm going to go right here and click insert and then pivot table. It's going to ask me where I would like to place this or what data I'd like to bring over, where I would like to place this and if I want to add this to the data model. This is going to come in here in just a second. But for right now, I don't need to, so I'm going to click OK. So now as we look, I have to the left where my pivot table will be created, and I can create my pivot table with this area to the right, which is called my field list. You might say, what are fields? Fields are simply columns from my original table here. All of these are the columns. Now we also get two contextual tabs with our pivot table, pivot table analyze and design. But one thing to keep in mind, if you click off of this pivot table, I lose my field list. I also lose my contextual tabs. To get those back, I could go here and click in my pivot table. So I want to look at average satisfaction scores by agent. So I could take these fields. I like to click and drag just to make sure it goes where I want. And I have different areas of my pivot table. I could put areas for filters, columns, rows, values. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take agent into my rows. And I'm going to take customer satisfaction into my values. And just like that, from all of this data, right, all of these hundreds of rows, I'm able to now see my sum of customer satisfaction. But I didn't want sum of customer satisfaction. I wanted average. This doesn't really do me any good right here. So. Whenever we want to change how our data is being summarized, we could right-click on any value, 
I could go down to my summarize values by, and I could do a count of calls, average, max, min, product. So here on summarize values by, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose average. Now, I don't really like the number format here as well. So I'm going to right click on these numbers and I'm going to go to number format. I'm going to put these here to number. And I'll put two decimals. I'll click OK. Now, that's a little bit different, right? In a pivot table, we only have to work off one number because these, all, these numbers all belong to the same field. So what we wanted to look at first right here was our conditional formatting. So let's say, for example, that I highlight my values. I could go to my home tab. And from my home tab, I have a group of command called styles. And in styles, I have conditional formatting. And with conditional formatting, I could click that dropdown. I could say I want to look at highlight cell rules. And I want to put what my minimum that I want is. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. I'm going to go to less than. And on my less than, I want it to highlight anything less than 4.5. I want them to highlight that in red. All right. Actually, you know what? I might put this a little bit higher. I'm going to put uh, 4.6 just to give us a little bit of a better example there. So I'm gonna click okay, and now I could see those values. So now if I wanted to see perhaps how these numbers are, you know, let's say I wanna see how these numbers change by the issue that the customer is calling for. Well, I could go up to pivot table analyze, and one of you know the one of my favorite features about pivot tables is under filter I could put in what's called a slicer, and with the slicer here I could click there. I could then choose a field or multiple fields that I'd like to add. I'm just going to put an issue for now, and then I'm going to click OK. And now I have a slicer. Now, to format these, I could click on my table. I could go up to the tab design. I could choose a different table style if I wanted. And always remember, the colors we get to choose from here always come from page layout and our colors. So if I wanted different colors to go along with my company colors, I could go in and simply change that up here. And then when I go to things like design, my options are updated. I can also click on my slicer. That also gets a contextual tab. So I could click there. And I could even choose a slicer style. So now, just putting this really quickly, I could look at my average customer satisfaction and I could look at it by issue and see where the issue, you know, where our customer satisfaction is lower. What issue are people calling in with where their satisfaction is lowest? If we click on A, everyone is under our um, our, our limit that we set, right? Anything under 4.6. So as we talk about interactive dashboards, that's really what we're getting to. Now, of course, it'd be more elaborate. We could add in, for example, I could go to inserts, right? I could put in a pivot chart. 
I could choose that chart. I could click OK. And then here inside of my data, I could now, and a pivot chart always reflects the table, so I could view and see the numbers and have the visual follow right along with me. All right. Now, I want to look at one other thing here just really quickly with our conditional formatting. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to go to clear rules and I'm going to clear those out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my data a little bit differently. This time, I am going to put issue under agent in my rows. So now I see each agent and I see their satisfaction based on each issue. Now, when my data is set up in this way, I can absolutely do conditional formatting a little bit different. I could have it shown on levels. I could go to conditional formatting. This time, I would want to go to new rule. And in new rule, I could go down to format cells that contain. All right, so we could click, we could go to conditional formatting, we could go to new rule, I could choose a rule there as well. I could go underneath that to the next field, conditional formatting, new rule. Now watch something that's different. I clicked AD, conditional formatting, new rule, didn't see anything different. I clicked on the issue, I did new rule, nothing. But watch what happens when I click on a value. I could go to conditional formatting, I could go to new rule, and now I get an extra part where I could say show all cells showing average customer satisfaction value instead of just showing it just for the agent. So if I click there in the middle, I could click OK. I'm going to go down and say only cells that contain cell values that are less than, I'm going to put 4.6. And this time, I could even set my own format here. So I might put that in like yellow just so it stands out. So now once I click OK, I could see this at different levels. I could go to the agent. I could right click. I could um, go to expand and collapse. I could collapse the entire field. All right, and then if I wanted to, I see all the highlights of those that are under or at my minimum. And now I could go to my agent, right click. I could go to expand. I could expand the field. I could expand the entire field. And now, not only do I see the conditional formatting on the level of my agent, but I see it next to each issue for each agent as well. So we could use conditional formatting in a standard way, or we could use it on different levels using our new rule when we have multiple fields in our rows. I'm going to go ahead and clear that for now. And I am going to take issue out of rows. And I'm going to take my customer satisfaction out. And I'm going to put in wait time into values. I'm going to put call length into values. I think I'm going to right click each of these like I did before. And I am going to do average. I could also right click to number format. I could go to number and choose two decimals. So I'm going to right click summarize by average. 
I'm going to right click and format to number with two decimals. Now, the next thing we wanted to look at here just really quick was our, you know, calculated fields here. So I'm going to jump back here and the calculated fields allows me to take an ex existing fields and create a new field that doesn't exist inside of my data. So here I could go up to pivot table analyze. I could go to my um, field items and sets. I could do a calculated field. And for example, if I wanted, let's say, total call length, I could then take my existing fields here, like wait time, I could insert, then I could add call length. And now I would have total call length here based on my formula of adding wait time and call length, and I could click OK. Um, I mean, on that calculated field, you could write in whichever formula you would want right here. If you wanted, if based on one of the fields, you could absolutely do that as well. Not even a problem. You could use any of these fields. You could just put in your own calculation here. So absolutely, you can use even more complex functions there as well. It's, that formula bar works just like any other. So. Once we have this information now, I could right click and look at my values. There's one issue though with calculated fields that that is a little bit of a hindrance. And that is it won't summarize now. Because I use the calculation, when I go in, if I wanted to see the average call length here, I just would not be able to do it. That's the biggest, you know, disadvantage. Also, with what we're about ready to do with our power pivot, I could also, I, I also could not use calculated fields if I was creating pivot tables and charts from power pivot as well. I, I get told, you know, we, we can create these custom fields, but they're kind of set the way they are. We cannot summarize them in any different way. We could to use them in other calculations, but we cannot summarize. So to get to our last portion of linking cells, I want to just, or linking tables, I want to just talk really quickly about power pivot. So if I were to go in and create a pivot table and I wanted to add another item, I would have to go to call center. I would have to insert another pivot table. I would have to connect those pivot tables through common slicers. If I wanted to add in these, what we generally call dimension tables, where they give us more information on things like agents, issues, resolutions, dates, products, to use all of these, right, and to be able to put them all together, that would be very time consuming in a standard uh, pivot table. Also, we'd be very limited on how many rows that we could use all together. We only get a million rows. But if I use Power Pivot, and Power Pivot is an add on, we could always add by going to our File tab, we could go to Options. I could go to add-ins and down at the bottom where it says manage add-ins, I would want to choose what we call com add-ins because that's what Power Pivot is. And then I could click go and I would just check the box to be able to use Power Pivot. Now, what does Power Pivot do? Well, it stores data. So I could click on this table I could go to my Power Pivot, and it has to be tables, as I was mentioning before. We can't just upload uh, ranges. That's another big factor why I like to turn data into tables. If I'm going to use multiple data sets, the data has to be in tables if I'm going to use Power Pivot. So here I could click and I could jump up here. And to add this to Power Pivot, I can add to the data model. 
Now I cheated a little bit here. I already added in for time's sake all of these other tables here as well. Now, what I would want to do to be able to now create these quick reports is I would just want to create relationships. I could do that with my Power Pivot window. I could go to this area where it says View, and I could go to Diagram View. And now each table has got to have at least one common field with the other tables. So usually we talk about this in two separate types of tables, fact tables. This is, this is my transactional data. My agents will have repeats, my dates will have repeats, the call lengths will probably have repeats, but everything we find in agents, each agent is listed once, each issue is listed once, resolution, date, products. So these are dimension tables meant to give each of these fields more dimensions. So I could take agent from call center and I could just click and drag and connect it to agent and agents. I could take issue and connect issue with issue. I could take resolution and take my resolution code up to resolution code. I can take date over to date. And then I could connect product code over to product code. Now I have what's called a data model. Everything is now connected. So as I go back to my data view, I can now start reporting on this data. So you might ask, well, how is this any different? Let me show you why this is so beneficial to data analysts. When I have Power Pivot, instead of having to bring in everything one at a time or bring in, you know, when it, sometimes you, you, know, you add pivot charts, it also adds the pivot table to go with it. Here it doesn't. I could go under Home and Pivot Table, and I could choose to put in a pivot table, pivot chart, but I could also put in chart and table, two charts. I could even put in like four charts. So I could go to pivot table for charts. I could choose to put this on a new worksheet. And now this creates a report page with four ready to go charts. I might take agent name into my legend. I might go down to call center and take wait time down into my values. Or maybe once again, I want to look at customer satisfaction which I could always left click here, go to value field settings. And I can now, because I did go up through Power Pivot, I can summarize by average now. I can click and I could bring in, um, let's say issue into my legend. And maybe I wanna bring in, uh, under call center, my call length by issue. Once again, if I want to change that from sum, I could left click, I could go to value field settings. I'll put this to average as well. And I'll just do another, just a couple of very quick ones here. Um, I'll put in uh, agents once again, and I'm going to put in from here under call center, I just need a value, so I'm going to put in wait time and call length. Once again, I could left click each one of these. I'm going to change them to average. All right, and now once I have kind of my thing set up here, I can click and let me just add just one more thing. I'm just doing this really quick. All right, so now I'm looking at my data, average customer satisfaction by agent, call length by issue, customer satisfaction by line, um, and wait time and average call length. And now I could go over to my pivot chart analyze on any of these. I could go to, let's say, insert another slicer. 
I might once again uh, go by, you know, try to think of one I don't have right here. Maybe I want to do resolution codes. And now I could go here under slicer. And if I go to report connections here under my slicer tab, I can now connect to each chart that is on this sheet. I add my slicer, it will now slice through all of these visuals. And of course, I have a lot of room here. I could go to pivot chart analyze. I could go to design. I could change the chart type if I wanted one of these to be, let's say a clustered bar, or I could click here. If I wanna change the chart type to 3D clustered column, we get all of these other options with styles. So the point is here, when I have these tables that I want to join in together, Power Pivot is a great way just to click and under Power Pivot, add to data model. Then within here, I could then export this out to create these very quick dashboards that we could use to analyze data. So hopefully you get an idea here of how we could use conditional formatting to give us warnings about our data, how we could take existing data and we can uh, create our own custom fields and how we can take multiple tables with an Excel file, or we could even import other things from things like databases or other like SQL oh. servers as well. All right, and we could add those here in one data model. I can now report, I could refresh the data and I could just re create these very quick dashboards. Okay, um, absolutely. I'm gonna go through these questions really quick. Connie had, um, is it more like data analysis, relationships and access? Absolutely, Connie. Um, all of these are really gonna be like many to one um, from right here. Um, so yeah, very similar, very similar relationships. Yep. Yep. You'll have access to recording. All right. Okay. So I'll leave this up to Mariella if you wanted to, if you had any questions ready, um, fire away if anybody has any questions. Hey, Ryan. Awesome. Yeah, we had a couple of questions here in the q and A. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be super mindful of everyone's time. So I think we'll only have time for a couple. So if you got to jet out, please head the heck out. But we have a couple questions here. Um, would the options in this um, webinar be similar to the 360 version versus the desktop versions of Excel? Um, you can do pivot tables. You cannot do power pivot in the web version of 365. Um, now I could use the data I could pull there. I could open that up in the desktop and use it, but the functionality inside of the web version of Excel just doesn't have the capabilities. Now the other stuff like pivot tables, calculated fields, conditional formatting, absolutely. You can do all of that. They've upgraded that now. All the web versions of Excel will, will have pivot tables. Hopefully that helped, but you wouldn't be able to use Power Pivot. Excellent. Awesome. All right. I'll probably do it like a couple more questions here. What are some best practices uh, for what type of data to select for rows, values, and columns so the pivot table shows relationships clearly? Can you give us some examples? One, can I get that, Mary Love, one more time? I just want to make sure I got the question right. Yeah, absolutely. What are best practices for, uh, the? T I guess, what types of data to select for rows, values, and columns so that the pivot That's tables? a great question. Um, nice. So what I generally go with right here is I generally, you know, as I'm starting off, if I'm taking this data, let's say, just as a very quick example here, um, I'm going to take this data. I want to create a pivot table with a chart and table here. Now, in a table, I don't really have any normal convention. What I do try to avoid is having very long fields in rows because it makes the data hard to keep in view of a report. Um, so 
generally what I will try to do is take something like I said, where I might have something like agents where it's not a ton of different agents. Or I might, you know, as opposed to, you no, know, if we have to, of course, that's completely fine. We might have to put that in. But I try to keep, you know, my main focus of my table. I always try to keep that in my rows, my main focus. If I want to see what that is spread out over columns, that's fine. But generally, my rule of thumb is what I am looking for, what is important to me, what field is important to me, that generally in a pivot table is going to go into my rows. So if I wanted agent name, that's what I'm looking at. I want that into my rows. Then under my values, you know, I could choose that maybe I wanted to look at, you know, uh, original sales amount. But then if I wanted this spread out over, you know, over another field, I might say, okay, but what is the uh, satisfaction by issue? I could put that in columns as well. And I could view my uh, data here with columns. Now, this gives me a couple of options that I really do like. Like here, if I wanted to right click, I could go to this option of show values as, and I could do with columns and rows, a uh, percentage of grand total. Now you could do that as well. The other thing, I just think it looks better in this type of table, but now I could see how much each call in each issue made up of my overall total sales doesn't really match up with what we're looking at, but I'll just give you an example. Now, charts are a little bit different because how charts work is, is you know, really depending on what we put in the axis or the legend. So always kind of a rule of thumb, whatever you put in your legend is what we call a, um, a series, right? So generally, I want that over, you know, in, in legend, I want that what I want spread over. So as we just talked about before, I'd probably take agents into my legend. And then, of course, to add depth to this chart, I could then add my values. And here I'll put um, customer satisfaction. All right. Now, again, if we wanted to see this over something else, maybe by line, we can, of course, add that. And that puts these now into categories. And we could see each of our series within each category. So it's about how you want your chart to look in pivot charts. You could mix things around. And that's why we call it a pivot table. We could add things in rows or columns, or just like I kind of did before, a lot of times what I'll do is take, let's say issue and put it under the agent name. Now little, I get this question a lot, people asking about moving pivot tables. Here's a little tip. When you want to move pivot tables, all you have to do is highlight the data, highlight the table. And if you put your cursor at the very edge of the data where you get four directional arrows, I can now click and move this pivot table wherever I want. So I get that question a lot. You can absolutely move pivot tables. You just want to select the entire pivot table, hover over one of the edges, and then you could click and drag wherever you'd want that to go. Awesome, that looked fantastic. And we have a resounding amount of thank yous and this is awesome. So I think our audience agrees, um, but I will again be so mindful of our time and get everyone out of here. So just in case you needed a quick reminder, we are going to be sending a recording of this uh, webinar. So if you weren't able to attend the full session or want to look back on some stuff, be on the lookout for that in your email. And if you need any more info on this topic, uh, please do not be afraid to visit us at newhorizons.com. And um, if you guys have any other questions, we'll definitely be holding another Pivot Table uh, webinar soon. So thank you all for your amazing feedback. And thank you, Ryan, for all your amazing info. Absolutely. I hope to see you all in, in some future webinars. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All righty. Well, everyone, thank you all so much for attending. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you very soon. Bye.